I'm doing pop culture, entertainment, things like that. This here is from Screen Rant, and one thing that's been going around that will be going around throughout the next year is how much people think Aquaman 2 will make it the box office. Now, this article is slightly older, but it's from long after Virginia. It's from January 8th, 2023, so I don't think in the near future the prediction will change. So they say how much money every 2023 DC movie will make our prediction, obviously, Aquaman 2 is on there. And after that, we'll take a quick look at Flash because that's a little bit of an interest because of Ezra Miller in the movie. Here we go. Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom box office prediction, $1 billion. And I think it'll easily break $500 million, which is not a failure. I'd even guess maybe even six, $700 million. Yes, the Johnny fan base is out there. Yes, it's going to make a dent in the movie, but I keep trying to tell people this is not my first rodeo with boycotts. The Star Wars franchise is, I think, as big as Johnny Depp, if not a little bigger on the whole, and there was a huge movement to boycott Episode 9, and it made a dent, but the movie still broke a billion. Maybe without that boycott, it would have got 1.2 or 1.3 billion or something like that. But it still did fine. And unfortunately, because of that, because of all I've been through with that, I just don't think Aquaman 2 is going to do so bad. Now, don't hate me. I wish they canceled it. I wish they canceled the movie. They said, you know what? Look at this court case. Amber's in the movie. Just cancel it. You know, everyone got paid. Everyone who made the movie, who's making a living, feeding their families, they got paid. It's on their resume. They're moving on. The actors from the movie, they'll get new jobs. They got paid. They're moving on. So it's not hurting anyone if it does bad. Don't worry about that. So all I'm saying is, don't hate the messenger. It's probably going to do not so bad. Let's see what they say. As the final DCU movie before James Gunn and Peter Safran's possible reboot happens, Aquaman and Lost Kingdom's box office is left in a precarious position when it releases on December 25th. The movie will be the final major blockbuster released in 2023 and will likely have very little competition in terms of new tent poles that attract mass audiences. This is good news for the Aquaman sequel and its potential to replicate the success of James Wan directed and Jason Momoa starring original. The first Aquaman's box office shocked everyone as it made over 1.1 billion worldwide. So what I'm saying is a lot of people come to me and say, Aquaman 2 is dead in the water, I've heard. Kind of a good joke there. Okay. Or they say something like, it's going to tank or whatever. Movies that make $1.1 billion generally don't lose like 70%, 80% of their fans just like that, no matter what. Maybe it'll do less. If it does half as good as the original... That's still about $600 million, which is not a failure. That's still pretty good. If it does like three-fourths of that, what the original did, it's still going to be around 800 or something, which is pretty good. And what I keep trying to tell people is the more time that goes by, the more of the general audience, not you, not the Johnny fan who knows everything, The general audience who doesn't care about actors' lives, except they saw the case in Virginia for like, you know, a couple of weeks, will forget. And the people that remember, obviously, won't see the movie, but how much is that possibly going to be? The path for Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom to repeat this success seems simple on paper, deliver another action-packed superhero film filled with adventure, great visuals, and fun characters. However, just how high Aquaman 2's box office climbs could depend on a release in China. The original Aquaman made $291 million in the international territory alone, but China recently has become stricter about which Hollywood movies get released there. Without one of the world's biggest box office markets, the first Aquaman would have made $856 million worldwide, an excellent performance that still would have topped Wonder Woman. And the thing about China is... They don't like all the identity politics and the racial things that a lot of Americans are throwing in movies, but I don't think Aquaman 2 will have that problem. But, they say, despite the potential of not releasing in China and the looming DCU reboot, 
there is still a path for Aquaman and Lost Kingdom's box office to deliver one final hit for the past DCEU plans. It is reasonable to expect that the sequel will have a higher opening weekend, $67 million, than the original and earn more domestically, $335 million as a result. Avatar, The Way of Water's box office shows how well a water-based sequel to a surprise hit can do with a December release and limited competition. So, the 1 billion milestone could still be how much the 2023 DC movie will make at the box office. So, I guess their main prediction about strategy is no competition. Going to be Christmas time, people are going to be off, they're going to go out to see a movie, and if they really want to go out and see a movie, this is the main choice they'll have. If it doesn't get released in China, well, yeah, that'll take a hit. Probably, you know, knock 15% off or something like that. I think there's political things about climate change in there. I don't know where China stands on that, so maybe they won't like that. Just my guess. And they predict $700 million for The Flash. And they say, With so many variables at play, The Flash's box office prediction being $700 million feels right. That would be more than Man of Steel at $657 million, but less than Batman at $770 million. And Wonder Woman at $822 million. However, The Flash is not as popular of a character as DC's Trinity. This speaks more to the film's reported quality and the excitement that could come through The Flash's multiverse story winning out. If the movie's even better than imagined and Ezra Miller's potential apologetic publicity tour works, it could climb even higher. So they mention Ezra and apologizing for things, but they don't mention Amber Heard and that huge court case. Look, let's face it. Ezra Miller did some bad things. Ezra got out of control, had some fights, allegations, but there were a lot of little things that kind of were here and there spread out over time. And, you know, getting in a fight in a bar is really nothing compared to what Amber did. There were some other allegations about having guns in the house with kids. That's pretty bad, absolutely, if that was true and that was what they said. Some people have guns in the house and some people have kids. So all in all, we're not exactly sure what happened there. My point is, I can't condone what Ezra did. I don't like it. But compared to Amber, mm, not even close. I mean, perjury alone in Australia could ruin an ecosystem, let alone, you know, affect a couple of people. Anyway, let me know what you think down below. If you're not subscribed here, consider it. If you don't subscribe, I'll be pretty sad about it, but I'll get over it. Big shout out to Man and Beard, by the way. Great supporter here. He's in my outro, actually. You can see him. He's been there for years. Figured I'd finish with that. See you next time.